Hi everyone, welcome back to Fertility Friday. Today we'll be talking about aging and fertility. As women get older, there is a decline in pregnancy rates and an increase in miscarriage rates. This graph shows pregnancy rates in various populations at different times in history. Fertility declines with age, and the effects are more pronounced in the woman than in the man. And for women, there is a significant decrease in pregnancy rates after the age of 35. In our 20s, with no other infertility factors, the chances of conceiving each month are about 20%. In our 40s, the chances of conceiving each month is about 5%. The decline in pregnancy rates and the increase in miscarriage rates with advancing age is due to both a decline in both the egg quantity and the egg quality as we get older. Let's talk about egg quantity first. We are born with a certain number of eggs, and this is genetically predetermined, and that number declines over time. The most number of eggs we'll have is 6 to 7 million when we're still in utero in our mom's belly. By the time we are born, that number has already declined to one to two million eggs. The number then drops to 300,000 eggs at the onset of puberty, 25,000 eggs in our 40s, and less than 1,000 eggs by the time of menopause. Over the course of our reproductive lifespan, we will only ovulate around 400 eggs and the rest of the eggs will die off. We cannot regenerate eggs, so once the pool of remaining eggs is depleted, we are not able to increase our remaining egg supply. Now let's talk about egg quality. As women get older, there is also a decline in egg quality referring to the chromosomal makeup of the egg. There is an increase in the proportion of genetically abnormal eggs. Usually an egg goes through two division processes and you end up with a normal number of chromosomes in the egg. As we become older, the chromosomes don't divide properly and we end up with an abnormal number of chromosomes in the egg. If these eggs were to fertilize, the result is no pregnancy, miscarriage, or genetically abnormal offspring such as Down syndrome. If cycles are regular and there's no suspicion for other infertility factors, women under the age of 35 should see a fertility specialist after one year of trying to conceive. Women over the age of 35 should be seen after six months, and women over the age of 40 should be seen right away. Patients not interested in having children currently, but wanting to know about their options for preserving their fertility can be seen when they're ready. Similarly, patients interested in checking their ovarian function could be seen at any time. Even within an age group, it is a spectrum, and ovarian reserve can vary among women of the same age group. For more information on how we test for ovarian reserve, please see video number five, ovarian reserve testing. We generally will assess ovarian reserve with an antral follicle count, which is assessed by ultrasound, an AMH, which is a blood test, and a cycle day two to four FSH and estrogen level, which is also a blood test. And the woman's age is also an important factor in assessing ovarian reserve. Once we have these results, we will review them with the patients, and I generally will categorize patients into four categories, high ovarian reserve, normal ovarian reserve, borderline concerned ovarian reserve, or severely concerned ovarian reserve. If we are in the severely concerned category, we will often discuss considering more aggressive fertility treatment. DHEA and CoQ10 are supplements that we often recommend in patients with low ovarian reserve. Testosterone decreases with age, and it is assumed that there is an age-related decline in testosterone that parallels the decline in fertility with advancing age. DHEA is an androgen produced by the adrenal glands, and it is a precursor to testosterone, and also slowly declines over time. It is thought that the age-related decline in DHEA may contribute to a decline in intraovarian and circulating testosterone levels in older women, and there is some evidence that DHEA may be associated with a modest increase in ovarian response. Therefore, I will usually recommend DHEA in patients with diminished ovarian reserve. Diminished ovarian reserve may be related to a decrease in substrates of mitochondrial energy production, and CoQ10 is one of those substrates. As a result, the processes that require high energy, such as those associated with fertilization and embryo development, 
are unable to work efficiently and more errors can occur in the division of the chromosomes within the egg, leading to a higher rate of genetically abnormal embryos. Supplementation with CoQ10 is thought to enhance egg mitochondrial energy production and improve the separation of the chromosomes and embryo development. Overall, studies are limited on both of these supplements. However, there is overall low risk to them, and I will often recommend them to patients with diminished ovarian reserve. In summary, fertility naturally declines as the woman gets older. Generally, fertility begins to drop in the early 30s and falls more rapidly after the age of 35. Women who decide to delay pregnancy until after age 35 should consider seeing a fertility specialist to obtain more information on realistic expectations about the chances of conceiving with and without fertility treatment. By learning about the impact of age on fertility, understanding your goals, and being aware of what options are available, a woman or a couple will be more prepared to make the best decisions for them. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the content. Feel free to leave any comments or questions below and ideas for other topics. Uh, you can always follow me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or TikTok under the handle Anuk Heatherison MD. Thanks again and see you next time.